welcome on this Memorial Day weekend. And remember, we uh, this week we remember those who have gone before us in, in the wars of the United States from the very beginning. We remember those from the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, the Navy, the Coast Guard, and the National Guard. Remember we, that we are remembering this weekend those who have gone before us, those who have fought for our freedoms that we enjoy today, and we remember those people in our hearts and our prayers this, this weekend. So it is appropriate this weekend, aside from uh, family gatherings and so on that we might do, but also go to the cemetery to remember those who are in your family that have have uh, provided service for America, as well as if there's a parade or a Memorial Day celebration, be sure to get out and to attend those events uh, to help remember uh, those on this Memorial Day weekend. Once again, we extend a warm welcome to all of you who are here, either in person or watching us online. Uh, we are very fortunate in this congregation to have uh, both. And our theme for this Sunday is the River of Life. It is our last in the sermon series on the book of Revelation. God's grace and peace be with you. For those who don't know me, I'm Pastor Deb Domeyer, the pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Paxton, Illinois. We are at 301 South College Street. If you're in our neighborhood, come on in and worship with us. We'd like to wish a happy anniversary to Grace Eicher Howes and Ryan Howes this week. Congratulations. It seems just like yesterday you guys were off uh, in Nevada getting married, and here we are today. Congratulations to both of you. Happy birthday to Rihanna LeClaire and Alica Glensler and Tammy Bellinger's this week, too. So all three of those folks, be sure to wish them a very happy birthday. We'd like to announce that Rocky Railway Vacation Bible School is, is going to steam on into our congregation with some toots and uh, railway, and it is going to be the best week of the summer. New friends, amazing experiences, creative games, snacks, Surprise Adventures, now that sounds intriguing, and incredible music. It is for ages kindergarten through fifth grade. It is, starts Monday, June 13th to Friday, June 17th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So if you have any questions, go ask uh, Tammy Ballinger. She can uh, help you out with anything in regard to Vacation Bible School. Regist Did you hear that? Registration will be in back, so be sure to register your children, grandchildren, kids in your neighborhood, bring them on in. We're going to have a great, great week. We'd like to remind everyone that the First Lutheran Church Blood Drive is coming. Mark your calendar for Monday, June 27th from 3 p.m. to 6.30 um, it has really been a God blessing doing this ministry of the blood drive here at church um, and to be able to help the community uh, in providing blood uh, for the, the area. If you have questions, you can contact Kevin Hansen. Um, if you've done it before, you know the drill, you can go online and sign up for your time there. But if you have any questions, Give Kevin Hansen a call. Secretary job is open. Now, I tell you what, it is wonderful working with Pastor Deb in the office. We have so much fun. No kidding, boy. Uh, sometimes the secretary brings in their kids. We have all kinds of fun things to do and uh, work in the office. And so, you know, a Great opportunity for a part-time position here for someone. Uh, we train folks uh, for the job to help keep our household, God's household, in order. Uh, plus, entertainment from Pastor Deb every day, Monday through Thursday. 
And uh, our hours are 8.30 to 11.30, Monday through Friday. If you have any questions, please give Jim Fox a call. There are attendance books in your pews. Be sure to pass those on down and, and uh, let us know that you're here. Um, are there any other things that anybody else might want to announce? We, we would enjoy people uh, signing up for snacks at the back. And also remember that our IGA cookout is coming up pretty soon. So get ready for that. Once again, we welcome you to worship this morning. We are absolutely thrilled that you're here joining us to gather for worship of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is our heart and soul, and we know he's coming. He's coming to our heart, and he's coming to our world. So let us begin with sharing of the peace. God's peace be with you, everyone. Hosanna. Trinity, one God, those whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and one another. Let us take a moment to reflect upon our hearts. Given over to Jesus any sin, troubles, burdens that lay upon us, we give them over to the Lord. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seat at the table. And when we met by those in need, 
we have often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves. Free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sin, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Reminding everyone to smile because this is a really happy song. So I'm hoping you all smile with us. A little patriotic too. Yeah. Very good. We would like to clap during this one, you know, with the rhythm, but, but we can't do that and hold our music. So if y'all want to clap towards the end, go for it. You'll hear. We know we're Lutherans, and we know you kind of have that background, but if you didn't feel like clapping, go ahead. Let it out. Go ahead.
Good morning and happy Memorial Day. Thank you guys for the awesome music that did get us awake this morning. Our lessons today, the first lesson is from the book of Acts. It is from the first chapter, verses 12 through 26. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in this ministry. With this, the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field, there he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all the intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Aclagamia, that is, field of blood. For, Peter said, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph, called Barabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed. Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. Here ends the first lesson. The second lesson comes to us from Revelations. Chapter 22 verses 1 through 6 and 12 through 20. Then the angel showed the river of water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the loved God will give them light. And they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, 
sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Behold, I am coming. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the adulterers, and everyone who loves and practices falsehoods. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Here ends the second reading. Please rise for how great is our God. Our gospel for this morning comes from John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26, and you can find it in your pew Bible on page 766. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me, though their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. And may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. 
I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those that you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory and the glory you have given me because you loved me because before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love that you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. God's grace and peace be with you on this fine Memorial Day weekend. But can you imagine, right, at this time of year, the garden of flowers in bloom? Right now I'm dealing with a lot of weeds. I gotta get those things pulled, right? And a stroll through the park, perhaps one that's close by here, or a trip to the museum not too far down the road, holding your grandchild dear or your children, a long conversation with your very best friend, or perhaps you have a new book or have taken an afternoon nap. Now, wouldn't that be pleasant? A cold drink of water, a dip in the pool, and yay, right? We got to pull this year after great uh, uh, fundraising. The pool will open this summer, so we can think about that dip in the pool. A few minutes of prayer. What is refreshing to you? What is refreshing to you? Maybe a moment of silence? Just a moment to put your feet up? Maybe it's a nice walk outside? What is it that, as we say, quenches your thirst? Now, I'm not talking about a Diet Coke right here. I'm talking about the spiritual, right? What is it that, that refreshes your heart? What is it that refreshes your soul? Years ago, in the very first church in which I was able to serve the, the Lord's Supper, there was a little girl from the neighborhood. She was maybe eight or nine years old and visited the church. And after worship, she was talking, you know, I was talking to this little girl um, who had obviously been invited to church. And she said, I like your church. They serve refreshments here. Mm. Now, isn't that what the sacraments are all about? They are refreshment. They, they are refreshing our spirit. They, they are refreshing our soul. They refresh our relationship with God, our relationship with God. They refresh our memory of God and what God has done for us. And, and we come to the sacrament of the refreshment table. And in the passage from Revelation today, this morning, we find out what is the essence of refreshment. That, that it's not just for us. But for everyone, the scripture tells us, who thirsts. Let's look at this passage together. It says that we are invited to come. Did you hear that part that Nancy spoke to us? Drink and invite to the river of life. Come. Come, people, come. Come, children. Come, babies. Come, come grandchildren. Come, grandparents. Come. The doors are flung open. 
that love, I love this, simplicity of this, invitation. No list of qualifiers. You don't have to be so high like you have to when you get on a roller coaster. No hoops to jump through. No baggage at all. You can leave it at the door. And through one word, Jesus throws open the doors. Not only the doors of church, but think about this. What is he throwing open for us? Throws open the gates in one simple word. Come. If you're thirsty, hey, come. Are you hungry? Come. Are you tired? Hey, come. Are you lonely? Well, get out of your seat and come. And if you need a place to rest and recuperate, hey, come. If you're here from a distance, Here's the distance invitation. Come. Come, come, he says. From Jesus himself. Jesus has invited you. And if we're not, then we're coming to find out what Jesus has told us. Come, the passage says. Let anyone who wishes... Take the water of life as a gift. Hello! And on that word of invitation, we hear, we see something that is so extraordinary, right? It's a doggy dog world out there. But here we have the most extravagant, I'm telling you, extravagant grace of God. Like the prodigal father who ran with open arms to greet his prodigal son whom he thought was lost. Oh, you're invited. Welcome. Or the extravagant shepherd who left the rest of the flock because he couldn't stand to see one of his sheep missing. It wasn't about economics. Economics would have weighed the cost that the sheep against the possible profit and loss of losing more. And if he ventured out for one stupid sheep, it wouldn't be economical. You see, it was all about love and concern for that one. That extravagance, that extravagance of God that it blows our mind away because we don't get it. God's grace is not just amazing, it's extravagant. I'm telling you, it goes to the point of being absolutely ridiculous. And those whose lives live by the checklist of do's and don'ts, can't possibly understand. It is. It's hard to wrap your mind around it. Because it's not on the list. But if you ever have been denied love, or have only experienced conditional love in your life, then, then you understand, right, the extravagance of what this is all about in the book of Revelation. And where nothing you ever did was right, garner the love and the affection that you need, right? It's always like that. That level just keeps getting higher and higher, and you wonder, is, is this person ever going to love me? Will I ever succeed in completing what they desire? But here is God's affection. You and me, we are honored and loved and lavished. More and more love than stink on a skunk. Yeah. yeah. It, it's that extravagant. I know Jesus said that, that to, to enter through the narrow gate, 
And maybe that is so that he can greet each and every one of us personally and not welcome us like, like a herd in the world. Or maybe there is a narrow gate that Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats with a simple look. Whatever the case is, the invitation still stands. Come, have a drink, come. And that's exactly it. The second part of this is drink. There's a woman named Nancy Spiegelberg who wrote a short poem and she wrote this. Lord, I call across the barrenness to you and with my empty cup, uncertain in asking any small drop of refreshment. If only I had known you better, I would have come running with a bucket. In this passage that Nancy speaks of, she reminds us that, that we are invited to not only come, but to drink. The old saying goes, what? You can lead a horse to water, but you just can't make him drink, can you? And it's true, isn't it? It's true about horses, and it's true about people. And sometimes we act like a horse, too, don't we? Yeah, you get a little bit of that German stubbornness in you. It don't matter what kind of Lutheran you are, right? English, African, whatever, right? We get, we get that great stubbornness inside of us. You're not going to make me drink of that water. I'll drink of that water whenever I want a pastor. But here we are today. We're presented with the water of life as a gift. Do we hold back? Is it, is it sometimes you're thirsty? Right? You're thirsty and you hold back. But drinking from the water of life is sort of like tuning your guitar, right? Those who play guitar in our church, right? It's, coming to the water of life is like playing your guitar. Oh, way back when I was in California, I took beginning lessons. Um... Yeah, but a friend of mine and I, we were sitting and we were tuning our guitar. She was teaching me how to do that. I had to restring my guitar and, you know, you kind of grumble and wonder, you know, at all at the same time, uh, whether that tune will get out of that guitar. But even, even, did you know, even if the guitar is tuned and it's sitting on the stand, right, Mike, right? It can, it can still get off tune, right? All right, Grace, wherever you are, right? Guitar can get out of tune. Just, you can tune it, put it on the stand, have it all tuned and ready to go, and, and it can get out of tune. And that, that's a puzzle, right? If you think about it, it shouldn't be that way. But there is a constant pressure and tension on those strings, and the tension combined with the thickness of the strings gives it the tone. And just sitting there on the stand, the tension can change depending on the temperature and the humidity of the room. And, or outside, if you're playing outside uh, to an audience. Uh, the stringed instruments seem to contain a tune because of the various tensions. And you know how to tune it. And the best way to tune it is with a tuner or a piano so you can get that proper pitch and key to all the music people who are out there, right? That is so. That is a fact. And unless you have a perfect pitch, it won't match anybody else's, right? It can be just a little bit off. And it sounds okay to you if you're standing there alone playing by yourself, but you start playing with other people, and then you start hearing, oops, the difference. And it's a lot like our spiritual lives, all right? Our spiritual lives need a constant tuning, okay? And this is the place where we do it. The invitation is here. If, if, if we tune all by ourselves, it can sound fine to us when we're at home all by ourselves. It sounds pretty good in our own head. But when we get with others, 
Well, maybe we need a little tuning here. Maybe we need a little tuning there. And that's the reason why we come to drink together. It's called the instruments of righteousness. The instruments of righteousness is using our gifts and our talents in a creative way for God. And we need that constant tuning, that constant refreshment of spirit for us, and that constant uh, together and coming together and invitation. Let me tell you about a young woman who was in a bus station. And as she was waiting there, she saw a woman with six children sitting on a seat. And she came over and she said, oh, I see that you have so many children. Would you like me to give you a hand? She said, I will babysit while you go and get something to eat and drink. And the mother said, really? She said, yes, I will be happy to sit with the kids and play with them while you catch something to eat. And she said, wow, that is really neat. Now, the mom went to the refreshment stand. It wasn't that far away. She could keep an eye on the kids, too, while the babysitter was watching the kids. And she came back, and she said, thank you. And that mom got on the bus, and off she went. Pretty soon, another mom came in. She was all by herself, and she had three kids. And that same young woman came up to them and said, hey, I see you're all by yourself. She said, you know, I would be happy to babysit for your kids while you go out and get something to eat at the refreshment stand. She said, really? Yes. And she said, I'll do it for free. You'll do it for free? Yes. She said, you can watch while you go over and get something nice to eat. I'll come play with the kids. So she played with the kids. And mom went off and got something nice to eat and came back. And two, she got on a bus to Chicago, and off they went. Pretty soon, another mom came in with a little son. She was all by herself. And she sat down, and the young woman came up to, to, the, to, the, to the mom and said, Hey, I see you're all by yourself. I'd love to babysit for you while you go get something to eat. And she said, Really? You do that for free? Yeah. Mom said, wow, that is really nice of you. So the mom went off and got something to eat. Well, she could see, you know, with the child playing and stuff and came back and got her child and she got on a bus and she went to St. Louis. Well, there was a man there in the bus station and he saw everything that was going on. So he went over to the young woman and said, said, Hey, I noticed you all day here in the bus depot and, and babysitting for free. Why, why are you doing that? And she said, well, let me tell you. She said, my daddy was in the Navy and we traveled all over the world. And there were times when my mom was in the bus station. And she was all by herself traveling across the world. And nobody was there to help her. So she said, when I grew up, I knew that I was going to help other people. And so that's why I go around and babysit for free. Now, this is exactly what our Lord is talking about today in the book of Revelation. How to invite and come and act out your faith in the real world. And what a beautiful gift that was. It was free, extravagant. It was a love for others and care and refreshment. And that is what we are all about. You and I are called to bless others in the world today. A gift that, that maybe others won't prize. But you know 
that it is a gift that is prized freely. Many people have walked past it thinking that, you know, what is the cost to God? What is the cost to Christ Jesus, his life and willingness to give out his love? The gift is the water of life. I say again today, come, drink, invite others. How will you share the gift? And how will you share the water? Let's pray. You can go ahead. There we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as our nation pauses today to remember the military who have given their lives for freedom we enjoy, we pray that you have looked, we look to you for strength and comfort and guidance. Be with all who serve our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection. Let peace prevail among nations. O oh God, especially let your mercy rest upon our land, even as we acknowledge with thanksgiving the past of the goodness of our country. And if at your will, preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry. Most of all, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all, military and civilian, to your holy word, where we find truth and peace for our sinful souls that surpass all understanding. Lord, our hearts are broken with pain as we hear again of death and despair caused by violence. Families mourn and children live in fear, and our nation asks why. We ask, O oh Lord, that you comfort the families wounded in the events in Uvade, Texas. Care for the souls who grieve and help us to work for a greater and lasting peace. Help us to transform our own hearts and turn from violence to seek peaceful ways to resolve differences. Let our hands connect with those who feel alone and those who live in fear and those who suffer from mental illness. Let our voices raise as we care for one another and for those who are vulnerable. Keep our repentance in and move us to know and to take a hold of the treasure of your saving grace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, your beloved Son, who alone gives this peace and hope for eternity. Amen. We continue our worship with the song Step by Step. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the offering. Special message for you today. Come on up, boys and girls. Good morning, Tammy. Did you guys know that many, many years ago when Jesus was on earth, he prayed for you, for each one of you. He prayed for you. He knew he was going back to heaven, and he told the apostles, you know that I'm in God. And he was a little worried because he knew he was leaving, and he wanted to pray that the apostles knew that he was in them. And then he said, whoever hears your message, I want them to know that I'm in them. And so we're going to talk about what it is to live of the world, but not necessarily in the world. So I have a science experiment today. I'm going to put it on the pedestal so I don't spill it.
So we're going to say this glass jar is the world. And we're filling it up with good stuff here, right? Because when God made the world, it was nice and clean and good. But then what all happens in the world? Anybody know? What kind of things happen? Drugs? Okay, so there's things that happen in this world. There's violence. There's people not listening to rules. And it makes it kind of murky, kind of dirty. And so the world isn't as clean as what God made it. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. Right? You see that? Well, that's what is in the world. All those things happening. What Jesus says is we should be of the world. And so we're going to say this is us. These are the people that believe in Jesus. And we're going to see what happens. Give it a second. So do you see that? Do you see how that part kind of goes on top of the world and it's clear? And you know what makes it so that we're those people that are that part that's floating above? Is Jesus' love. And so if we have Jesus' love, we're of the world. And we're, we love everybody because Jesus says we have to love everybody. Even if we don't agree with what they say, even if they look different, even if they believe different, he calls us to love the people that are in the world. But we're of, of the world because... We love Jesus, and Jesus loves us. And so that sets us apart. And that means that if we're telling other people, we're helping bring them out of the world and into that of the world area. And so God wants us to know that he set you apart, that he made you know that he loves you, and his love changes you and makes you a little bit better than maybe what's in the world. So let's pray. Dear God, you prayed for us, and we're going to pray back to you today. We're going to thank you for that gift that you give us of your love. And that we we can read it in that prayer that you gave us, that you wanted us to know that you are in us. And that if we hear your message, that we know your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And just leave that right there because I think maybe maybe grown-ups might want to come up and take a look at that after after worship with their kids again. Thank you, boys and girls. You can head on out and go back and sit with mom or dad or grandma or grandpa. Head on out. Thank you. You want to stay up here? You can help me bless everybody. Oh, we got a last song. We believe in God. <laughs> The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. 
Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.